Mr. Longridge, Mr. Mr. Stevens, how are we? Very well, sir. Thank you. Are you all right? Right. Yeah, good. Brilliant. So obviously, this morning, in the early hours, we were up at six o'clock this morning getting the context for, for OCR's uh, GCSE for the 2021 phase. Um, what do you feel about the three contexts that we've got so far? To me, they're very, very exciting. I think they yeah. offer a lot of scope. Uh, there's a lot of flexibility for each subject area. And it's things that are quite relevant as well. You know, I think that they're, they're things that we could could do quite, uh, there's quite a lot of opportunities in them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think just the same, so many opportunities there. I, I thought when I first saw them, they looked brilliant, but now I've been through them and written a few ideas down and done my own mind mapping. It's even better. There's so, so many opportunities, something for everybody out there. Yeah, I mean, it's absolutely clear to me that multi-purpose spaces has, has certainly come out of the situation that we're in now, hasn't it? Where we are all working from home. We're all using all these different spaces around the home to see how we can make that as efficient as possible. Um, so, you know, just right off the bat, I mean, there is, I, I just think that the, the opportunities there are massive because you've got all the different rooms around the home. You, you may be... In terms of a project, look at places where you can't work, and is there a, is there some sort of solution that you can come up with in a product that can allow you to to create a new work desk or a new workspace? I mean, what what you, do you along with? Yeah, you've also got your stakeholders there with you. Yeah. So in most instances, people will be working at home at the moment with family members around them that will be having problems or experiencing issues. It may be sharing a computer, it may be using a kitchen table or someone's trying to cook. There's so many potential areas within that problem. Yeah, yeah you, your primary users there. Yeah. Just, just re ready-made primary user yeah. in your house. Pick and one. I think off, off the back of that as well, um, there are millions of people across the country, across the world in that situation. So there is a real possibility to design and make a product which could which could go on to be to be marketed, to be sold. There's no reason that can't happen. Yeah. There's a real demand for a product of, of that sort right now. Yeah, I mean, as long as you right, you know, you can get a real primary user immediately. From someone in your household but also you've got a real space you've got a real area that you can measure that you can that you can test with um you know for me i think that's a, a really really easy um easy win uh, provided obviously that the that the product is uh, is yeah. sound but it's um, not it's not just directed at home working is it no you, we can look at things like uh, small apartments and spaces so small apartments where in inner cities where it's very expensive so you get an apartment with maybe two rooms. So you got one room for so for socialising, for eating, for cooking. You know what? What could you think about to do with that? You could think about outside spaces. Mm -hmm. um, could be for re relaxation. Could be for socialising. Yeah. Um, many many opportunities. Yeah. And on the back of that, you it talks about modern society. And I do think that there's a move towards affordable living. The fact that property prices are expensive. A lot more people rent. Surely yeah. that has opportunities, design opportunities within having things that are more portable or more. Uh, you don't have to just have in one house. It could be anywhere. Yeah. I think, I think what you need to be aware of, or, or be wary of, is that this is not, I'm going to go build some huge dining table that, that turns into some sort of desk. That, you know, it's not scalable, it's not going to be achievable. But if you think about how we work and how we live, you know, perhaps a task light that then becomes an ambient light, you know, you can think outside the box here. It doesn't have yeah. to be a work surface. It can be something that helps us with work. And for those for those students that are interested in that, I would encourage them to go and look at Dyson's Light Cycle Morph, new product that's just come out, which is exactly that, changing lighting so that we can have work and play or and relaxation as well. I think yeah. another good resource to have a look at, if, if we're looking at spaces and what can be done, looking at George, George Clark Small Spaces, a program is on Brilliant. Channel 4, I think it is. But they come with some very, very clever, innovative ways of, of using these small spaces to do multiple things. Yeah. Students could sign up for 4OD and start watching those episodes of secondary research. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Anything else and to add before we go to the next the, one? The, you just said about being multi-purpose. I think that that's the key here. Uh, it has to be something that has more than one function. So thinking about what people do at the moment, how people do it, and what opportunities there are to combine things or to to try and enhance what you do to make them better again. Uh, you also said about the size of dining tables. I am, I'd, I'd really advise everybody to try and keep it relatively small. The smaller it is, the more portable it is, the easier it is for you to put together, to make, to, it's far, far quicker to finish as well. So if you're doing an RM style 
uh, product with Mr. Stevens, this, to me, the smaller they are, the quicker they are to finish and get a higher quality finish. You may say differently, Mr. Stevens, but uh, well, no, it, my take it, on it. it's purely down to the, the product, isn't it? You know, we can scale things down um, depending on what it is. So we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it, I think. I think we agree also that this this certainly appeals to both papers on boards and RM, doesn't it? And, and, mm -hmm. and sorry, polymer and timbers and perhaps even metalwork. I know that Mr. Long is keen on more metalwork, so we'll we'll see what comes of that. All right, well, let's move on to the next one then. So this one is the everyday activities, which really focuses on it inclusivity. So those groups of people that find tasks that you and I find easy and, and, and we do them day to day without thinking about them but there are groups of people out there such as the elderly or, or those that perhaps have some kind of disability that might find you know certain tasks difficult so in terms of the wider implications of how positive design can be for people's lives this is certainly that project isn't it yes yeah yeah there's some amazing amazing ideas as well um i've got a, a few notes to look at so consider things like uh cooking able-bodied people find cooking uh, or preparing meals relatively straightforward what if you were uh, uh, missing a limb or uh, had relatively low grip um, how, how do you overcome that uh, things like cleaning things that we just take for granted things that we can do yeah. um, people other people might not be able to do that personal hygiene how do you look after yourself how do you yeah. clean yourself just a few ideas there to get you going good one for mr stoker there thank you very much sir <laughs> <laughs> have you, uh, jokes aside, have you got any ideas that you're looking at the moment, Mr. Longridge, anything that... that to me, I, I thought about, when I was looking at that, the, it does talk about older people, it doesn't necessarily mean elderly people, so it's just disability or uh, potential limitations that people develop as they get older, so it could be things like hearing loss, it could be things like uh, sight loss, uh, any kind of sensory impairment that stops you from being able to engage in function and use products as normal so uh, you know relative to now i know a lot of elderly people are getting into using phones or zoom calls for conferencing to see their family is there some scope there in terms of access and you know, allowing people to engage more easily yeah uh, I, mean, I, I stumbled on some research which is really important um and it and, and i think it, it's widely it's widely known now that pets can have a calming effect on people particularly those that have got difficulties in their well-being and what I've also read is that the RSPCA reported that there's a decline in pet owners in the over 60s. So, you know, for me, I like the idea of how can we make caring for pets more accessible to the elderly who might live alone, need some sort of companionship, you know, tasks like bending down to clean litter trays, feeding, entertaining animals. Animals need at least an hour to two hours of entertainment a day. You know, how do you wash those pets if you've got some kind of dexterity issue? Um, so yeah, you know, for me, I, I see I see a big a big shift in, in, in lots of things that we can sort of look at there, really. Yeah, I like yeah. the way it's so open. And the the yeah. topic is completely open. It could go anywhere. Uh, other aspects I have with things like sport. We're thinking about accessibility in sports and how things like uh, we now have for older people, or for some people that are older, play walking football or games that you you do in a certain. You know, you've amended the rules slightly. There's scope to look at what games, what hobbies, what interests people have, and, and try and find a way of making them more inclusive. Yeah, I mean, I, I, maybe a little bit more difficult for papers and boards this one, I think. But you know, it could be that you create some kind of campaign that allows elderly people or people that are older to meet one another. You know, some sort of social engagement for those that don't use social media. I don't know what that looks like, but. I think papers and boards have a lot of thinking on that one. Yeah. For me, yeah. for me on this one, the really important thing to, to have is a real stakeholder. You know, at, at the age of 16, 15, 16, you can't guess what the elderly are going through in terms of difficulties. So you have to have a real stakeholder on this one. Uh, and obviously, we'd always advise that's a family member or a close friend, uh, and not simply go out and, and find yeah. some street. But um, yeah. yeah. You have to have a real problem for a real solution. So I think you know, if you have got, if you are lucky enough to have like a, a grandparent that, that you can work with, you know, just go and talk to them and ask them, interview them, and ask them what do they find difficult in their day-to-day -day lives, and just have a real project that can actually enrich their lives in some way. Um, I think is my advice. It also lends itself well to anthropology and watching people living and looking at how you might watch an elderly person 
uh, someone maybe with arthritis or someone with difficulty using their hands and you might just simply watch what they do make notes annotate them so that you can then essentially look for solutions design ideas yeah, yeah. Uh, another thing i did think about was things like health and safety with it and uh, a lot of products that we would take for granted to so something like a fire extinguisher is designed for an able-bodied person to use it you know are there scope for some different products that enable people to respond in emergency situations perhaps so i don't want everyone to do a fire extinguisher but thinking that way you could make products that are easier in an emergency situation for, for elderly people or it's not just elderly it's people with uh, mobility issues i think uh limited movement so it's limited movement is the key bit there if you can make a product that does that i think that's going to be a winner yeah think think about yourselves in everyday situations think about when you go to morrison's what what you do and what somebody else in a different situation might not be able to do for example reaching the top shelf or getting some goods down from the top shelf yeah. something as simple as that there could be a real need for a product along those lines yeah uh, exciting it is an exciting context